Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to talk about P-E ratio. The first slide in all my presentations is a high level, explaining the basics of the topic. Then I'm going to give you an example, we're going to interpret the P-E ratio. We'll do a high P-E example, a low P-E example. We'll talk about inflation, P-E by industry, by country, and then a summary at the end. So let's get a high level understanding on what P.E. is. Simply put, P.E. stands for price to earnings. The formula is market cap over annual earnings. And you want to take the annual earnings. Most P.E. ratios use the prior four quarters. But you could take the most recent quarter and multiply by four. Another way to calculate the P.E. is look at a company's stock price divided by the EPS, earnings per share. Earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. Remember, net income is a company's profit or loss. It's at the bottom of the income statement. A lot of times in finance, people use different terminology to confuse you. You may hear somebody refer to PE as the price multiple or earnings multiple. Sometimes you may watch Bloomberg and somebody say, this company is trading at 10 times earnings. That just means their PE is 10. Why don't they just say a PE of 10? They probably just want to sound smart. The PE is really helpful to equalize companies. Because if you're looking at two companies, one with a 1 trillion market cap and one with a 1 billion market cap, of course the 1 trillion market cap company has higher revenue, has higher earnings, has a lot more employees, etc. Because they're a thousand times larger than a billion market cap company. But when you look at PE, it makes everything equal. So if both companies have a P.E. of 10, that means they're both trading at 10 times earnings. If the billion dollar market cap is a P.E. of 10 and the trillion dollar market cap company is a P.E. of 20, then it appears the billion dollar market cap is more undervalued, at least in terms of P.E. ratio. Also, the P.E. is a good way to look at the entire market or entire industries. It's also effective at analyzing a company over time. Because if you see a company's P.E. drop over time, that means it may be getting more and more undervalued. To explain P.E. in one sentence, it's a valuation measure showing how much investors are willing to pay for a company's earnings. But earnings aren't everything. Sales are important. Future growth prospects are important. You can't just focus on one number like the P.E. ratio. Let's do an example so it makes a little more sense. Let's look at a company that has a market cap of $1 billion. Market cap is stock price times shares outstanding. You can get the stock price or shares outstanding on Yahoo Finance or dozens of other websites. The market cap is how much money that company is worth according to the stock market. You also need the company's trailing 12 month net income. To get this, just look at the income statement for the past four quarters. The bottom of the income statement is their net income. In this example, it's going to be $100 million. So if we summed up their past four quarters, it would be $100 million. Net income is their revenue minus their expenses. It's the profit or loss of the company. So the PE is the market cap over the net income. In this example, it's 10, 1 billion over 100 million. So an investor is willing to pay $10 for $1 of net income. Let's just say, for example, next month the market cap shoots way up to 2 billion. The stock price doubles. Now the PE is 20. Now you have to pay twice as much as you did last month for the stock. So it appears more overvalued than before. Notice that the denominator did not change because the company's earnings haven't updated. The earnings update every quarter. The numerator changed. The numerator changes every trading day because the stock price goes up and down during the trading day. So the new PE is 2 billion over 100 million. Now let's say the following month, the stock crashes and it's down to 500 million market cap. It's half of what it was originally. Now the PE is five, it seems really undervalued. 500 million over 100 million. Investors are paying $5 for $1 of earnings. So it seems like a great deal, right? But the P.E. is just one number. How do you really interpret the P.E.? On the previous page, the P.E. changed from 10 to 20 to 5. An investor was willing to pay $10 for $1 of earnings. 
then $20, then $5. So you would have been better off waiting till the stock price went down in this case. But maybe it went down for a reason. Maybe the company's really struggling. Maybe when the PE was 20, it was because they had a big contract in place and then the contract fell through and the stock crashed. So when you see a high PE, it may mean the stock is overvalued or it could mean the company has really high growth potential. On the flip side, when you see a low PE, that means the stock may be really undervalued or investors are expecting limited growth in the future. But how do you really know if a stock is over or undervalued based on the PE? Well, you have to look at a lot of other things. You have to compare the PE to other companies. You have to compare the PE to the same company over time. But what's really important is looking at the company as a whole. Do they have a moat? Is the brand really strong? Are their products needed in the market? To give you a little context, let's talk about the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is 500 large cap U.S. stocks. It's not the 500 largest U.S. stocks, but they are 500 large U.S. companies. It includes Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, etc. So if you want to know how the U.S. stock market is doing, you can just look at the S&P 500. And as a whole, the S&P 500 had a PE of 5, its lowest point ever in 1917. Could you imagine the entire market with a PE of 5? I couldn't even imagine one of these 5 companies at a PE of 5. Google had a PE over 500 at the end of 2021. Now it's down to 22. There was a time when Tesla and Amazon had a PE over 1000 and people were gobbling up the stock. Could you just imagine the demand for a Tesla with a PE of 5? At its highest point, the S&P 500 had a PE of 120. That's right before the market crash in 2009. But across its history, the S&P had a PE of 16. That does not mean if a stock has a PE below 16, it's a better value than S&P. So let's talk about a high PE company and look at the pros and cons. So let's say there was a company we wanted to invest in with a 10 billion market cap and their net income in the trailing 12 months was 10 million. That means that PE is 1,000, 10 billion over 10 million. An investor is willing to pay $1,000 for $1 of earnings. Why would anybody pay so much for a stock? What if the company just received FDA approval for a blockbuster cancer drug? That could be a reason so many people are gobbling up the stock and driving the stock price higher, even though their net income is so low. So maybe investing in a thousand PE company is a good idea, at least in this situation. What if this was a meme stock that didn't have much growth potential, but everybody was buying it up for some reason? In that situation, we'd probably want to avoid this stock. But let's say it was a company that developed drugs, but they had no drugs past phase two of the FDA trials. Once again, we may want to avoid the stock. In order to get FDA approval for a drug, it could take many, many years, sometimes 10 or 15 years, and it could cost millions and millions of dollars to get to that point. So you might have to spend 10 years and $50 million before you get any revenue. Now let's look at a low P example and talk about the pros and cons. Say this company had a $10 billion market cap and trailing 12 month net income of 10 billion, a PE of one, so you get your money back in one year. There's almost no risk investing in this company. Why doesn't everybody just put their money into this company? We may want to invest if we're in a bear market and the company's future sales seem strong. The stock market may be crashing. Every stock is going down, including this one, but the company sells a product that everybody needs. It could be a large supermarket chain, for instance. So this could be a good time to buy this stock. But what if they're selling an obsolete product and future sales are likely to be low? We may want to avoid this stock. Let me give you an example. Say in the late 80s, the largest typewriter manufacturing company had a PE of one because in the past 12 months, their sales were really high because every company used typewriters. But there's this new invention called the personal computer that's going to take over and there's going to be no need for typewriters. Just because the company had a ton of sales in the past doesn't mean they're going to have a ton of sales in the future. 
And that's why the PE is so low because the market knows this. There may be some investors who feel typewriters will never be replaced. So they put a lot of money into this typewriter company. But unfortunately, they would lose a lot of money in this instance. So really low PE could be a value trap. It may not be an undervalued stock. How does inflation affect the PE? First, let's define inflation so we can see how it fits. Simply put, inflation is when prices rise and your purchasing power declines. So if you have $100 today, you can purchase less tomorrow with that $100 because prices of products go up, like the price of gas, the price of food, etc. So if there was a manufacturing company, they would have to spend a lot of money to make products. That means the cost to make products goes up a lot during inflationary periods. So what do they do? They pass on those costs to their customers. They just raise the prices of their products. So using that logic, stocks tend to be a good hedge against inflation. So inflation is pretty much a tax on savings. If you have money in a savings account earning no interest, that money is worth less and less each day. So your savings are taxed. You wanna put your money to use. Buy real estate, buy stocks, buy bonds. Of course, no one knows which stock will go up more than inflation and which stock will go up less than inflation. But generally speaking, stocks are a good hedge against inflation. When inflation is high, PE ratios tend to go down because the denominator, the E, the earnings, tends to rise more quickly than the stock price. Usually high inflation results in low PEs, low inflation results in high PEs. But they've done a lot of studies on this topic and there's no clear cut answer. This is the most common result, but there's been times when the opposite occurred. What I've noticed when investing is usually when things go smoothly, the stock market goes up. But when there's big disruptions, like a war, inflation, the stock market can be pretty volatile. No one really knows where it's gonna go. On the NYU website, they have a breakdown of PE by industry. And this is current as of this month. Some industries seem really undervalued, like air transport, a PE of seven. And then you have other industries with a PE above 2000. If you see an industry with a low PE, it's probably an industry that's been around a while because a low PE indicates limited sales growth in the future. Think of when TVs first came out. Everybody was using radios, then this new invention called TVs. The PE ratio must have been through the roof for companies that sold TVs because the demand was expected to be so high for these new products. TVs are still a pretty important part of our lives, but the sales have definitely flatlined, probably even declined with computers. But some companies or products go through stages where demand is expected to be really high, then really low, then high again. If an industry has a PE above 100 or above 1000, it's more than likely it's a younger industry but it may also be a mature industry that's going through a lot of changes. Like the auto industry with all these EV companies popping up. So try to think of the opposite when anybody tells you something. When your friend says only look for PEs below 20 because that means the stock is undervalued. Think in your head that means the stock may be overvalued. And when your friend says avoid PEs above 100 because the stock is overvalued, in your head, think of a high PE as a good value. Of course, not every high PE stock is good or bad, and not every low PE stock is good or bad. You have to try to understand the company and the industry. But if you really want a 10X, 50X, 100X on a stock, you're much more likely to do it with a PE above 100 than a PE below 20. If you invest in a company with a PE below 20, you could one or two X over the next couple of years, it is possible, but you're more likely to have a steady, slow growth with that company. Here's the PE of all US stocks, but the countries they're domiciled in. So Vale is a Brazilian company, they trade in the US. So Vale is part of the Brazil companies. 
The average PE for Brazilian based company is five. When you see a country with a really low PE like three for Greece, it's more than likely the country is really risky to invest in than the stock is really undervalued. And you may see forward PE. That means analysts are projecting the future net income for the company. South Korea has a really low PE, but the projection is for their PE to go up to 1400 in the future. So to summarize and bring everything together, when you see a PE of 15, that means a company is valued at 15 times their earnings. So this indicates that if you bought this company, it would take 15 years to earn your money back. For example, if your friend sold you his company, he sold it to you for $15,000 and his annual net income is $1,000 it would take 15 years, a thousand times 15, to get your money back. Of course, just because PE is 15 today doesn't mean it's gonna be 15 tomorrow. Maybe you'll run the company a lot better and increase the net income to 5,000. That means now it takes only three years to get your money back and the company's worth a lot more money. Say you did grow the company 5X, you increased net income five times. The value of the company should go up a lot. So if somebody wanted to buy the company from you after you grew it so much, you probably would sell it for a lot more money. Not $15,000, maybe like 40 or $50,000. PE is really ideal for public companies. It's hard to get a PE for a private company because most private companies don't have a value assigned to them. For instance, I owned my own company for 10 years, but I never raised capital. I used my own cash to get the business started and it was profitable after 10 months so I never needed more money. But I do consult a lot of private companies and they raise capital every so often and that's a good way to value your company. Say for instance you raise $100,000 of capital. You find an investor to invest $100,000 into your company and you give them a 10% stake in a company. This would imply your company is worth $1 million. If you sold 10% for $100,000, the entire company is worth $1 million. And if your net income for the past 12 months was $100,000, that means your PE would be 10. 1 million over 100,000. To bring it back to this example, if you invested in a company with a PE of 15, that means it would take 15 years to earn back your initial investment assuming net income is flat. Although you may notice lots of companies have negative earnings, so they don't have a PE, it's NA, because you can't really have a negative PE. Because when you think of the PE, the lower the better. And if it's negative, it must be an amazing PE. Of course, that's not the case, because if it's negative, they have negative earnings. And to add a little more confusion to the mix, there's usually multiple kinds of PEs. The most common is the forward and the trailing. Trailing is what you see most. It's the trailing 12 months of net income and the current market cap. But you may also see forward PE. This means analysts are projecting the future net income of the company. But any ratio including PE is meaningless on a standalone basis. You wanna compare it against similar companies and against the same company over a long period of time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Leave a like, subscribe, comment. Talk to you soon.